Can a $12 rivet removal tool do the same job as an $80 one from a aircraft specialty shop? Let's find out. All right, so here it is, um, all disassembled. Um, this is the main body here. Um, here's the shank that uh, you connect into your drill bit or into your drill as a quarter inch shank on it. Uh, there's several, uh, well, two uh, roller bearings here. There's a spring so that you can be spring loaded when you push it into the material. Um, there's also up here on the tip, um, this is the part that actually will fit around the uh, rivet to hold it centered um, and a locking threaded uh, ring here that uh, locks it into place. Um, so that'll screw onto the tip up here and it's adjustable so if you unscrew the, the locking ring you can screw this uh, in or out and make your drill bit either protrude farther or less far depending on uh, what you need, what kind of drill bit you have. Originally it came with uh, several metric sized um, drill bits. Uh, the largest one was a three millimeter and it was about the same size almost as a number 30 drill bit. However, the three millimeter drill bit uh, was not quite large enough to drill out a rivet. Um, and so I took one of my uh, number 30 drill bits, um, had to cut it off a little bit just to make sure that it didn't protrude too far. Um, and then I used a, a different 30, number 30 drill bit to drill a hole into this um, locking mechanism here so that I could fit it into it. So that's there. Take this Allen wrench. Tighten up the Allen screw on there, so now it's uh, one with the shank here. Um, that in turn goes on to the tip of this. Use my wrenches here to uh, tighten it up. That's all one piece now. Next, we'll put the uh, Put the other um, bearing here on the back. And then the whole thing slides into the, uh, the main part here. Then we'll put this locking bit here on the back. It locks the whole thing all together. Um, and then you'll use this uh, tip here and the locking ring to determine how far out you want that to go when you're finished drilling. Uh, in my case, I only want it to go very a very small amount so I don't end up damaging other parts. Um, tighten that all down. And then this will go in the end of your drill. Pull this out just a little bit just to make sure that when I uh, push all the way down on it, it doesn't actually hit the chuck. So let's demonstrate this uh, with uh, the actual part that I ruined before and uh, you can see how well it works. All right, you can see that I've already drilled several of these. Um, the first couple ones, um, you can see here, I kind of drilled and it uh, did actually mark, uh, the, the rivet did spin a little tiny bit. And what had happened there is that I wasn't putting enough pressure on this part to hold up against the rivet. Um, so it was really not much different than just putting a drill into it and going into it. After about three of them, I realized what was going on. And then from there on, the rest of these have not spun. And then hold down on the shank that uh, spring-loaded shank. Push down against it so that it makes friction against the uh, rivet head. And then don't put too much pressure on the drill itself. Just let it spin. And I'll put this on high speed because it doesn't catch as easily if you do. Um, so I'm holding down on this part, and I'm slowly going to introduce the drill once I've get it spinning. The drill head did not, or the uh, rivet head did not spin. Didn't do any damage to the outside. Um, if I grab another rivet here, so I should be able to just re-rivet that like I did before. Um, let me do another one. And then I'm holding down the, the bigger shank part and I'm gonna slowly introduce the drill bit to it. Again, no damage to the uh, to the skin um, because the rivet's not spinning as a result of using this tip piece here. 
Uh, one thing I might uh, suggest you do, let me grab the new one that I haven't uh, edited at all yet. So if you look at the tip here, um, the inside has a, a very square edge on it. Let me see if I can get this to focus here. It has a very um, square edge on the inside. So it might be worth just taking your uh, deburring tool and just sort of rounding that off just a little bit. And the idea behind that is that uh, when you put it on top of the uh, the rivet head here, it has a little bit more surface area against the rivet head to hold it still. So you can see that it has a little bit more surface area there um, where the head will be. It's sort of got a bevel on it. It helps it to center over the top and hold it steady a little bit better. I noticed that when I was spinning this previously, the drill bit was kind of wobbling around in a circle like this. What I did, uh, just kind of bend the drill bit just very slightly, just enough to make it so it, it drills straight without wobbling. Um, I'm not sure if it was because I didn't drill straight enough into the shank or if my drill bit was bent. I don't, I don't really know which one it was, um, but it was vibrating quite a bit the first couple of them that I did. Bent the drill bit and then suddenly it worked fine. So uh, just something to think about. So I'll put a link out to where I bought these from. I actually bought them from two different suppliers on uh, AliExpress. Um, I thought that maybe they're going to be two different types, but they were actually in the exact same packaging and everything, just sold by two different vendors. Um, so anyway, hopefully that's helpful for you.